You may be seated. Good evening, family, friends, and loved ones. How's everyone doing? Good. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. This wedding has been a work in progress for over two years now, and here we are, finally, all together on this beautiful day. Before we begin, I want to congratulate almost all of you for finally attending your first gay wedding. <laughs> it's such a huge accomplishment. And today, you finally, officially earned your gay ally card. So now, if anyone questions you, you can say, well, I went to a gay wedding once, so don't try me. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Zach Schoenbein, Hannah's younger brother, which makes me the best gay ally here tonight. <laughs> Emma and Hannah told me that they wanted to keep their wedding as far from traditional as possible. So instead of hiring a pastor at a church, they hired an ordained minister, <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> Special thank you to getordained.org for this honor. <laughs> The best $70 I've ever spent, so. <laughs> but seriously, thank you guys for choosing me to be up here with you two today. Even though you know my voice will probably crack <laughs> at some point, it's just such an honor to be the one to bear you to. I want to say a few words about the brides before we get to their vows. Beginning in August of 2018, Hannah and Emma fell in love. They celebrated every monthly anniversary the first year they dated. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who would cringe at their anniversary posts every single month. <laughs> the first year of their relationship, Emma would drive three to four hours every single weekend to visit Hannah at college. It was there that Emma and Hannah not only fell in love, but built friendships together. These two became best friends, and through their strong friendship with each other, everyone in their lives felt, fe everyone in their lives felt special and loved times two. This is one of the things that I love most about them. They never miss an opportunity to make their people feel loved. And I'm sure each and every one of you can attest to this. And no, Hannah didn't slip me $50 just so I make them look good. <laughs> she only gave me 20 so. <laughs> In any case, I don't need to be bribed to speak highly of these two. And that's because, unlike my sister, I'm a lot better at spending money than she is, so <laughs> I'd feel bad taking what's left of hers. <laughs> so back to the real reason we're here. The open bar. <laughs> but actually, we're here to celebrate Hannah and Emma. And I have no doubt that this love will last forever. I watched the two of you support each other in your worst and best moments. Your unwavering love has made it evident that you two are truly made for each other. You have this incredible way of knowing just what your partner needs at any given time. Together, in the last four years, you two have endured loss, sickness, and pain. But also, together, you've experienced big wins and career advancements. Not to mention the adoption of your two extremely codependent fur children. <laughs> Shout out my nephews. <laughs> but through it all, you've always found a reason to celebrate. And the days where you just want to rip each other's hair out, well, that's why they have a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Hannah, you are loud, you're feisty, and you like things to be done your way and only your way. <laughs> Some might call it stubborn, but you've always preferred passionate. <laughs> and Emma, you're soft-spoken, you're laid back, and so caring. It's easy for you to just go with the flow. You two cannot be more opposite. Yet somehow, you always know just what the other person needs. And that's something only soulmates experience. Neither of you had the easiest time growing up, feeling different from all of your friends, and even experiencing hate because of who you love. But I'm confident that every single moment that led you to this day was meant to bring the two of you together. 
I'm so proud of both of you for making this public acknowledgement of your love to one another. This is not just another wedding. This is your moment to truly embrace the love you've always deserved and that love you found in each other. I'm confident that the two of you will change the world for the better. Your passionate souls joined together as one will be unstoppable. You'll raise your children to be bold like you, unapologetic like you, and most importantly, to believe that there's nothing more important than love. And something I'm sure everyone here believes, there's no wrong way to love, and you two have proven that. You are valid, your love is not a sin, and you have at least 200 people here in this place alone who see the beauty in the way that you two love each other. So congratulations, you two. Thank you for being the best sisters in the world and for sharing your white claws with me when I was underage. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> you two truly deserve all the happiness that you're feeling right now. I wish, I wish you both nothing but love and so many drunk nights playing pool together at your favorite bars. <laughs> this is only the beginning of what I'm sure will be the greatest journey of your lives. I'm beyond honored to be a part of it, and I love you both so much. Without further ado, the brides have written personal vows for each other and we'll read them now. <laughs> there it is. Whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. Mine is yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. I have a soft voice, so I'm gonna yell. <laughs> so everyone can hear. Okay. <clears throat> I want to start by saying that I wanted to read our vows in private and Han wanted to read them in public in front of all of you. <laughs> so naturally we compromised and did what she wanted. <laughs> okay. I have a confession. I didn't write my vows. You wrote them. You wrote them when I said I was cute in a bar in Seattle. You wrote them when you moved into my heart like you already lived there. When you walked into my life like you already knew it. You wrote them when you found me in pieces and led me to peace. You wrote them the first time we said I love you. The first time we kissed, held hands, and went on a date. Laughed and cried together. You're good. You're good. Just hold it. Just hold it. <laughs> you wrote them when we had our first fight and talked it through unafraid, knowing it was going to be okay. You wrote them in all the big and small moments we've shared together. I couldn't tell you the exact moment I knew when you were the one, but I can tell you the feeling was overwhelming, too overwhelming to ignore. I remember spending hours and hours talking on the phone at night until the sun rose and peeked through my window, making me feel like time no longer existed. In all of those conversations and moments, I realized I'd finally found someone who allowed me to be vulnerable. I found that you were perfect, and so I loved you. Then I saw that you were imperfect, and I loved you even more. I found a soul that was meant for mine, and a heart to feel at home in. I found the person who could fill my cup without even trying. 
the person who made me feel like I could conquer the world, even on the days when I was too sleepy or sad to even try. I found another reason to be eager to wake up in the morning because every new day meant I got to learn something new about you. I found someone who effortlessly reinvented my tainted version of love. I found who I'd been searching a lifetime for. I found my person. I found you. It's an understatement to say that you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. You are my best friend, my anchor, my other half. You make me feel brave, beautiful, intelligent, loved, and deeply cared for beyond measure. You loved me long before I loved myself, and I see the best of me when I'm with you. You showed me who I was before I knew I could become her. You accept me in all my forms, on all my good days and bad days, and in every season of our, our life. Your heart is so big, I don't know how it possibly fits in your little body. <laughs> your courage is admirable, your laugh is contagious, and your love is unconditional. Your outpouring of adoration for me through sweet nothings and breathtaking poetry makes me feel like I've won the lottery. Thank God I feel rich in love because this wedding was too damn expensive and my bank account is hurting. <laughs> you are fiercely loyal, selfless, and trustworthy and have the most sincere love and compassion for not only those close to you, but for anyone who is lucky enough to meet you. Thank you for loving my family as much as I do, even though Madeline made it nearly impossible to even tolerate her in the beginning. <laughs> Don't worry, all is well. <laughs> they hate each other a little less now. <clears throat> Watching you become the woman you are today and getting to be by your side to support you has been one of the most extraordinary gifts of my life. It only makes me more excited to know that someday I will be watching you become a mother to our kids and raising them to be brave and kind just like you. We've got so much life to live and so many memories to create, and I can't imagine doing any of it without you. Of all the people you've met on your journey and all the places you've been, somehow you ended up here with me. A love like ours is rare and special, and we can both agree that we never felt like this type of love existed until we met. We never believed we deserved it for ourselves, and we struggled every day to convince ourselves that it was out there waiting for us. Until today. Until the last four years became our reality and this once in a lifetime love flourished. Our souls collided. Until our souls collided, we became one. In a world of so much uncertainty, I know one thing to be true. And that is that our love will withstand the test of time and that it's stronger than the boys' nails when they viciously clawed all of our nice furniture. <laughs> <laughs> From this day forward, I vow to honor you, respect you, support you, protect you, and care for you. I promise to show up for you when you need me. I will always stand up for you. And maybe sometimes tell you to sit down when you get a little too loud and rowdy. <laughs> but we both know you won't listen, and that's okay. I promise to continue to lift you up and challenge you to be the best version of yourself. I promise to treasure you in every moment we share. I promise to love you when life seems easy and when it's really hard, when our love is simple and when it's an effort. I will be the best mom I can to our kids, the best wife I can be to you, and the best life partner you could ever ask for. You deserve this day this love, this life, and me. I chose you on August 28th, 2018. I choose you today, and I will continue to choose you forever. I've almost done, I promise. <laughs> I feel overwhelmingly lucky to be standing here right now, about to be one heart with the love of my life. Little four-year-old Hannah, who dreamt of being a bride, would be so proud of the remarkable woman standing in front of me because I've never felt more proud to be with you than I do right now in this moment. 
this roller coaster we call our life together is my favorite ride, and I don't ever want to get used to the fall. From now until the end of our days, you will never walk alone, and you will always have a safe home in my heart. Forever is never long enough, but I just saw my forever walk down that aisle, and I couldn't be more excited to share this life with her. I love you, sweetheart. And then you can read your vows now. Emmy. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I've pictured today so many times in my head that I'm actually having a hard time believing it's real. As you know, since I was little, I've dreamed of my wedding day. But as I grew older, I just couldn't see the vision. I couldn't picture myself being a missus to a mister. I couldn't picture a wedding in a church. I couldn't really picture a future for myself at all. I never felt like I fit the narrative because I always knew I was different. I was afraid and confused and felt like an unlovable sinner who didn't deserve that kind of love anyways. And then you showed up. It's okay, take a breath. And you changed literally everything. And thank God you did because I can't even tell you how many dates I went on with boys. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Where I'd come home wishing I could just crawl out of my own skin. I didn't know what it felt like to get butterflies or to have a first kiss I didn't regret. I didn't know what it felt like to fall asleep in someone's arms and wake up genuinely happy to see them there next to me. I didn't know the feeling of first date jitters or how badly I could miss someone when they were gone. God damn, it's okay. Take your time, baby. Take your time. It's just us. And after a tumultuous number of years where I tried so hard to experience even just one of those things, I finally gave up trying. I accepted that marriage just wasn't in the cards for me. I turned 21 that year and went to my very first nightclub, eight. <laughs> and that was the first night that I saw you. You were the thing I'd been longing for. And I finally got to meet you in person after having stalked your Instagram more times than I'd like to publicly admit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds creepy because it is. <laughs> your voice was higher pitched than I expected it to be. It was sweet and kind and sincere. Your glossy eyes told stories of wishing for better days and your presence was bold and true. You knew who you were even when you claim to be still trying to figure it out. Bright lights flashed across your huge brown eyes, and I swear my entire body turned warm in an instant. And not because of the shot of bottom shelf tequila I'd taken moments before, <laughs> but because your eyes felt safe and familiar. I knew immediately I'd do everything I could to learn everything about you. I wanted to know how those eyes looked in the daylight. What shade of pink your cheeks turned when they'd seen too much sun. How smooth your hand felt after tossing a skipping rock in the Puget Sound. <laughs> and I ached to be close enough to remember your scent. A scent that I'm wearing today on our wedding day. <laughs> because it reminds me of you. Perks of a girl dating another girl, you get to share perfume. <laughs> So mine is yours, right, baby? <laughs> so 
anyways, in that moment, I lost my cool. I lost my game. I opened my mouth and all I could muster up was, you are so cute. <laughs> You slurred back to me, you are too, baby. <laughs> and I was like, yup, she's the one. <laughs> Meeting you for the first time is etched into my memory as if my brain is a tree trunk and I carved it in there with a knife. I will never forget it. Meeting your soulmate for the first time really is one of those moments where time literally stops. I was no longer in control. Younger Hannah was. She, for the first time, understood what having butterflies in your tummy felt like. She blurted out those words because she'd never been able to before that moment. She knew that all the waiting and searching and heartbreaks and shame that led her to that moment were irrelevant. She didn't know it at the time, but I do know. And I truly believe I've known you in every single lifetime because from the time I learned what love was, I felt a part of my heart was missing. But when I saw you for the first time, I felt whole again. It took a lot of pain and hurt for us to make our way to each other this time around, but it was so worth it because you helped me to truly feel worthy of your love, the truest and most beautiful love I've ever known. In you, I found my best friend and my favorite person in the world even on my worst days, and you've seen far too many of them in the last four years, you show me grace and patience. And you tell me you understand me, even when I know I'm not making any sense. Some days the world feels too heavy for me. And you always meet me with so much compassion as I wrap myself up in my comforter chrysalis for hours and even days. It's not easy loving someone like me. Half the time I'm either anxious and depressed, or the other half I'm yelling at you in the kitchen for not seasoning the potatoes the right way. <laughs> my way. <laughs> my tendencies to be in control and listen to have been a burden to so many people in my life, but you love me anyways not despite these tendencies, but because of them. You find ways to love me without trying to fix me. You make me feel like I deserve this kind of love. I love so many things about you. I love your generosity and your willingness to give what you have to others. I love your weird obsession with crime documentaries. <laughs> I love the empathetic way you navigate through the world that's so cruel sometimes. I love that you don't let us go to sleep angry with each other, and I love that every fight usually ends with the phrase, that was so dumb, why the hell did we even fight about that? <laughs> I love your ability to pull off a dress one day and an entire outfit from the H&M men's section the next. <laughs> I love your natural rhythm and when we sing together in the car, I love when you can't help but kiss each and every one of our friends on the cheek when you've just finished your second glass of wine. <laughs> I love the way you find new reasons to create life with me, and I celebrate life with me. We can't do that, we're gay. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> I love the way you find new <clears throat> reasons to celebrate life with me, and I love that these celebrations always take place in shitty rundown dive bars. I love our movie nights and our drag race marathons and our <laughs> I sort of just feel like watching Cloudy with a chance of meatballs too tonight kind of <laughs> nights. I love our conversations about the future and the dreams we have about being the best mamas together. I love this life with you. I feel so grateful to stand up here in front of all the people we love 
and bragging about how incredible you are. <laughs> I love that you waited only one day after I moved in to propose to me. <laughs> and I love that we got to plan this entire day together. It was a lot of work, but it was so worth it for this moment. Mm -hmm. I love that from this moment until the rest of our lives, I will finally get to call you my wife. As your wife, from now until forever, I vow to help you see yourself the way I see you. I vow to encourage you in every season of life, the seasons that are easy and especially the ones that are hard. I vow to work my hardest to create a life we enjoy, not only in our 20s, but 50 years from now when all our kids are grown up and we have nothing but time together. I vow to be honest with you, even when it's hard, and I vow to always keep your best interests at heart. And most of all, I vow to be your best friend above anything else. Because loving you, Emma Blouser, is the one thing I'm most proud of in this life. I adore you, and I promise to never stop choosing you. Good job. It's okay. I know, me too. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> the brides will now exchange rings, symbolizing the promises and ongoing commitments they've made to each other. You two may join hands. First wedding, so. <laughs> I'm gonna ask each of you a question which you'll either answer with, I do or I do not. <laughs> Emma, please place the ring on Hannah's finger. Emma, do you give this ring to Hannah as a symbol of your lifelong commitment to keep her heart safe? And do you wish for her to wear this ring as a reminder of the promises you've made to her, to love her, support her, and cherish her, not only as your wife, but as your best friend, today, tomorrow, and forever? I do. Hannah, please place the ring on Emma's finger. Hannah, do you give this ring to Emma as a symbol of your lifelong commitment to keep her heart safe? And do you wish for her to wear this ring as a reminder of the promises you've made to her, to love her, support her, and cherish her, not only as your wife, but as your best friend, today, tomorrow, and forever? Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the power vested in me, by the state of Washington, I now, finally, officially, pronounce you married. <laughs> Emma, Hannah, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> And now, for the very first time, let's give a warm welcome to the new Mrs. and Mrs. Blouser. Woo!